Hey there, this is Books with Becky, and I'm Becky. Are you guys ready for the third part of our story, Ivy and Bean, by Annie Burroughs and Sophie Blackall? I'm ready. I can't wait to see what they do next. Last week, they went into Ivy's really cool bedroom, and this week, I think they're going to figure out how to put a spell on Bean's sister. That dancing spell, remember? Oh, that's going to be funny. Let's see how they do it. Ivy and Bean by Annie Barrows and Sophie Blackall. Beware. Once they had agreed to cast a spell on Nancy, Bean stared long and hard at Ivy's robe. Those little pieces of paper had to go. The first thing we have to do is make you look more like a witch, she said. Ivy looked down at her bathrobe. Why? Bean tried to explain without hurting Ivy's feelings. If you want other people to believe you're a witch, you have to look more witchy. But I don't care if other people believe me, said Ivy. Bean shook her head. What a weird kid. It'll make your spells better, too. You've got to dress for success. Her mother said that all the time. It usually meant that Bean had to put on a clean shirt. Besides, it'll be fun. Do you have face paint? Ivy nodded. In my room, upstairs, she pointed to a window. Is your mom inside? Bean asked. I guess, said Ivy. Is she going to tell my mom where I am? Grown-ups stuck together that way. Bean's dad said it was because they were all in a club together, but Bean felt pretty sure he was making that up. Ivy tapped her wand against her hand. Maybe we should sneak in, just to be sure. That was fine with Bean. She loved sneaking. She loved face paint, too, and she was really going to love watching Nancy kick her legs and wave her arms for the rest of her life. They went in the back door to the kitchen. Bean could hear Ivy's mom talking on the telephone somewhere in the house. This is going to be easy, whispered Ivy. She's working. She yelled loudly, Hi, Mom! Can I have a banana? Hang on a second, Bean heard Ivy's mom say. Then to Ivy, she said, Honey, I'm on the phone. Get your own banana. There was the sound of a door shutting. Okay, yelled Ivy. She smiled at Bean. See, very tricky, thought Bean. Ivy was turning out to be a lot more interesting than she had expected. They walked softly past Ivy's mom's door and up the stairs. They were very quiet. At the top of the stairs, there was a door with a sign that said, Beware, in red glitter glue letters. That was Ivy's room. When she went in, Bean stood still and looked all around. This is way, way cool, she said. She had never seen a room like Ivy's. There were thick lines drawn on the floor, marking out five sections. Each section was like a different room. In one section, there was a small sofa on a rug and a bookcase stuffed with books. In another was a table covered with pens and paper and glitter glue and paint. Ivy's bed, with a canopy made of silver netting, was in another. A dresser and a folding screen painted with clouds were in the fourth section. The fifth section had nothing in it except dolls. Bean had never seen so many dolls in her life. There were the regular plastic kind of dolls. There were the weird staring dolls with fancy costumes that were kept in glass cases at the toy store. There were stuffed wooden dolls. There were china dolls, small ones, smaller ones, and tiny ones. There was one doll that was really a rock dressed in clothes. All the dolls were seated around a doll-sized blanket. Even the mushy baby dolls that couldn't sit by themselves had been propped up with blocks in the middle of the blanket. There were stiff wooden dolls. There were china dolls. 
small ones, smaller ones, and tiny ones. There was one doll that was really a rock dressed in clothes. All the dolls were seated around a doll-sized blanket. Even the mushy baby dolls that couldn't sit by themselves had been propped up with blocks. In the middle of the blanket lay a Barbie doll wrapped up in toilet paper. All the other dolls were watching her. Neat, said Bean. A mummy? Yeah, said Ivy. I'm going to build a pyramid to bury her in as soon as I figure out how. I know how, said Bean. Nancy made one out of sugar cubes last year. I can't believe your parents let you draw lines on your floor. It's only chalk, said Ivy. It comes off. I change the lines when I change the rooms. For now, I'm thinking about getting rid of the dressing room and making it into a kitchen. Is that one the dressing room? asked Bean, pointing to the section with the dresser and the folding screen. Yeah, I like the screen said Bean. But a kitchen is a little bit boring. Maybe you could turn it into a science lab for making potions. The screen could protect your secrets. A lab, said Ivy, thinking. A witch's lab. That's a pretty good idea. Bean looked over to the table with the paint and the glitter glue. What's that room called? she asked. That's my art studio, said Ivy. Cool, said Bean. Let's fix up your wand. In Ivy's art studio, there were plenty of sequins and jewels and streamers and pipe cleaners. First, they wrapped the wand with silver pipe cleaners. Then Bean attached streamers to the end. Then Ivy put some stickers on. Then Bean put plain glue on the top and dipped it in a jar of glitter. She stuck a big red jewel on the top. The wand dripped a little, but it looked much, much more magic than it had before. Now, said Bean when that was all done, let's work on your robe. What's the matter with it? asked Ivy. All the stars and moons are coming off, see? Bean pointed. It will look better if we draw them on with sparkly markers. Ivy looked embarrassed. I can't draw stars very well. I can, said Bean. I'll teach you. Bean showed Ivy how to draw dots for the star points, then connect the dots with lines. Ivy practiced on paper for a while, and then they stretched the bathrobe over the table and began drawing. Ivy's stars were a little bent, but they all had five points. Soon, the black robe was covered with silver stars and gold moons. Once that was done, Ivy got out her face paint. Bean couldn't believe it. The set had 24 colors. Wow. Let's do green stripes, said Bean. Or green dots. There were three different greens. No, witches are only green in movies, said Ivy. Real witches are just regular colored. But you've got all this great face paint, said Bean. We've got to use it for something, Ivy thought. You could put black around my eyes. Okay, but aren't real witches kind of pale because they go out mostly at night, asked Bean. I guess, said Ivy. Kind of pale, but not green. My mom knew a guy who turned green. It was because he watched TV all the time, said Bean, but she could tell that she wasn't changing Ivy's mind. What if we did all white with black around your eyes, she suggested. Yeah, Ivy nodded, with a couple of blobs of red on my cheeks for blood. That's good, Bean agreed. Blood is good. So Bean carefully smeared white all over Ivy's face except her lips. Then she drew red drops down her cheeks. They didn't really look like blood. They looked more like red tears, but that was a pretty scary thing too. Then Bean drew thick black lines around Ivy's eyes. Both girls thought that witches' hats were dorky, so they wrapped Ivy's head in a black scarf, borrowed from her mother's dresser drawer. It looked almost like long black hair. Ivy stared at herself in the dressing room mirror. Wow, she said. I look really strange. And she did. That was so funny. And she's all dressed up with that face paint and the scarf on her head. They came up with some really interesting ideas for what a witch looks like. What do you think a witch looks like? Halloween's coming up, you know. All right. Next week will be the fourth installment, and I'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.
Have fun. Life's fair that way. Bye. It was her spell book. We thought that the spell book would be mysterious looking with a magic sign on the cover. 